Hey, what is going on guys? It is Toki with the DG channel. I'm here to bring you a brand new guide on how to play Mozzie. I'm going to be going over some tips and tricks, some proper gadget placement, and be sure to stick to the end of the video if you want to see how to get a free kill with Mozzie every time on a run out. It works like 100% of the time almost. And if you do enjoy the video, make sure to like and subscribe to the DG channel. It really helps out. And with that, let's get right into the loadout. So for Mozzie's primaries, we have the Commando 9 and the P10 Roni. And to be completely honest with you, I could not tell you which one is better than the other. I I feel like they're both some pretty strong weapons. The P10 Roni, it's really strong at the 1.5. However, the holographic on it is pretty nice too. I like to use it on playing other operators. For me personally, I run the 1.5 flash and angled on the P10 Roni. I was trying out compensator for like the attachments. And for the Commando 9, I usually run hollow flash angled. So for Mozzie, you kind of like to roam a little bit. And having angle grip is kind of better for just like being gun up ready for when you're about to take a gunfight. Like if you're caught lacking with vertical grip, it's going to be a little harder to win that gunfight if running just angled and both of these guns have just like zero recoil basically just drag down a little bit and for his secondary pistol i usually just run the standard muzzle break laser and i keep laser on just for the reduced hip fire spread so if i'm ever caught like in a panic moment hopefully one of those shots if i'm hip firing just get through a little easier compared to without laser and for his gadget you're definitely going to be wanting to run the nitro cell mozzie just such a versatile operator when it comes to his nitro cell and what you can do with it and i honestly don't know anyone who uses the barbed wire or why you would use it unless like you're really lacking in it. So I'm gonna hop into custom beam now and I'm gonna go over some tips. So when you're playing Mozzie, you're definitely gonna be a roamer and one of your main goals as your roamer for Mozzie is to deny info and to waste time. So for me personally, I feel like the best places to roam on Clubhouse when you're playing Mozzie would be like either you could go bottom garage, you could roam in stock or bar. Or you could just stay around this little lounge area. And the reason for this is just to help if anyone needs to go below and get the wall, you can kind of chill in stock. You can uh, contest them. You can hold down stage and you can support your guy on rafters when you're just in lounge. So that's just some of the best places for CC. And like if you're below per se, you could chill near bar. You could hide in a little rat spot. You can go and lodge you upstairs. I mean, it's really endless where you can go. But your main goal when doing this is just to waste time. Try not to go like too aggressive and then die. It's okay to play aggressive as Mozzie, try and get that first pick. But once you get that first pick and you have advantage in numbers, you can really just back off and just try and run away and just waste time for the enemy team and that's really just one way to waste time but that kind of brings me on to my next way which is the intel deny now before i go over that though i do want to go over what you should be doing during prep phase as i do think that's kind of an important manner that some people like to skip away so during prep phase uh make sure to reinforce two walls it helps your team out set up site a little bit before you leave to do your own thing but um while you're doing that i do notice some people just like to place their pest wherever they want just like after they do that or they just don't reinforce the walls place them down and just go about their day i personally disagree with that because uh you can place your pest in a very bad spot where the enemies could just shoot it and it's just a waste of utility it does absolutely nothing and it doesn't contribute to anything what i usually suggest is after reinforcing just look out for the drones and try and see where the drones are coming from and that could help you identify what type of push the enemy team is doing so for instance if i saw like a lot of drones coming in or like one or two from garage and like one or two from stock i i'd assume that you know they might push stock and they might go for the main wall or try to clear rafters so with that i can with that information i now know where i want to place my pest drones to deny the info but before you place your pest drones i would just shoot the drone the first wave of drones i'd shoot them and the reason for this is because if i shoot the first wave of drones they don't know where my pests are and they have less drones to work with now so if i shot the first wave and then i placed it after and i captured a few drones that'd be way less drone economy for the enemy team so they'll have little info to work with and when you're placing your pest starts try not to place them around like the same area so if i want to place them like garage and then like this drone hole and then right here i think that'd be pretty bad i'd space them out so like i'd put one on stock door i'd go i'd put one on the drone hole above uh top red and then i'd put one like all the way you could go all the way over to bar if you feel like it if if you think they're gonna push from kitchen if it's like downstairs you just place it on this chain door or in kitchen bathroom whatever but generally speaking spacing out your pest drones makes it a little harder to predict where they will be if they're if they're not like cluttered around the same area and that helps out with 
trying to capture a drone a little bit better. And with that, I'll show you what you can do with the capture drone. So once you have managed to capture yourself a drone, what you can do with them, the possibilities are literally endless. So to go over it, I'd give you a few examples, which would be to just prep these in specific spots for information or to recall information for your team. You can use these drones to get a little lineup going for a nitro from below, or you could use these drones to just get a nice little run out going. So I'm going to be going over that. So let's get started with like, say a cheeky little nitro from below. You just prep the drone anywhere you want. It's kind of hidden. So this spot is a pretty close, but not a lot of people like to check over here spot. And one of the common spots would be under the desk or under these tables. However, I feel like under these tables, the drones get seen from the store pretty easily. But yeah, once you get yourself a drone, you can get a little Z ping going on like where the enemy is. Then you just hit a nitro from below and they're dead. And with that, I mean, that's just one of the ways. Just get yourself a, a cheeky little kill with that. Help get an advantage going on your team. And you can also use them to deny plant from below just like that. But I'll quickly just show you a nice little tip when using Mozzie drones that some of you may not know. It could help you out tremendously. You can use Mozzie drones to block a claymore if you want to go for a run out and be a little more stealthy. But do keep in mind, you do have to block all three lines. Otherwise, you will get clipped by the claymore and die. So for example, see this claymore is here. It's fully working um, and the enemy is going to be right over there. So I'm going to go ahead and block it. So as you can see, I'm blocking the claymore. I'm like running through here. It's not working. It's not going off and I'm free to just run out and just kill my opponent. So that's a pretty simple but handy tip that I learned when using your mozzie drone this is like a last resort because you do lose the drone after but if you're going for a cheeky run out trying to get that man advantage placing your drone on a claymore is kind of a, a really helpful tip to use so with that i'm going to be going over what you should be doing towards the end of a round so let's say you're doing your job as roaming wasting time etc and now there's like less than a minute left what do you do so normally for me once there is like a minute left and under i do try to like kind of make my way back to site the safe take the safest route possible obviously you don't want to get harmed so going up brown stairs probably wouldn't be the best of idea as every, all the enemies are going to be kind of more crowded towards site since the timer is ticking they got to get a plant down or do something if they want to win so try and uh, identify what route is best for you to take and make your way back and if you still have your nitro honestly i feel like that's that's really great for you because you're able to deny plant now if you didn't get like a nitro from below or whatever on cafe it's pretty easy to deny plant from below though you can just prep like a drone like anywhere basically you top, put it on top of here you put it on here you kind of get a call out as to where they're planning you can deny plant from below with low time or you can make your way back to site and help fight with your team and keep the enemies out of the objective a lot of people do struggle to figure out when do should they return back to site as in lower elo i do see a lot of players just like sitting off site when there's 15 seconds left and they get a plant down they're all the way down here they're like lost how they plant you know start running they get a little panicked and eventually you may lose the round to that. So my golden rule is if there's less than a minute on the clock, I'm, I'm going back to site. And and honestly, you could pull out even earlier, but I suggest like lurking like somewhere closer to site rather than like being three floors away from it. So say you come back a little earlier. Now you can start like playing piano or playing the surrounding areas and don't have to fully anchor in site. Say you come back a little earlier, you can just play in the surrounding areas until you really need to come back to site in actuality, like your bomb site. But yeah, that's typically my golden rule as to when you should come back to site. And that's going to be it for the Mozzie Guide video. If you enjoyed or you did learn something new, uh, drop a like and leave a comment below. It does help support. And be sure to check out Disrupt Gaming's channel. They offer a variety of content for helping to turn you into the ultimate siege gunner as possible. That's going to be all. Peace out.